What's up guys, welcome back to the Trucker's Life. I'm Jorge Navarro. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you've already been subscribed, welcome back guys. And I'm excited because I am almost to the house. The load that I picked up in St. Louis, unfortunately, I mean, well, I picked it up and everything was well, everything went smooth. But um, I'm gonna have to sit on it. I'm gonna have to sit on the load for a day and a half before I can deliver it because uh, it's not scheduled to deliver um, until a day and a half from now. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna, I'm riding these back roads out here and I'm very close to the house, probably about 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away from the house. And uh, so I'm riding these back roads to get back to my house and then I'll uh, go deliver that when the scheduled time is and be done with it and then start off uh, a new week because we already have a load going to Georgia so gotta keep on working guys and keep on working I would like to spend more than a day and a half at the house with my family but right now I will take whatever comes because there's a lot of us that aren't working a lot of you guys that aren't working and uh, can't say no to work can't say no to work just gotta continue to take care of ourselves buy me some uh some little some uh, face masks a little pricey but for health reasons i think that uh it was well worth it ten dollars for five yeah right now we're about to pass up right here the livingston dam of livingston texas or Livingston, uh, actually Livingston River, the lake, and this is the, the Trinity River right here that we're going over right now. And there are a lot of boats out there, a lot of people fishing. Let's honk somebody. Let's honk anybody, anybody waves. <laughs> I always like honking when people are <laughs> are fishing or playing golf. Playing golf is the funniest one. Uh, yeah, they might miss their stroke there. <laughs> Now, normally when I go past the uh, people that are fishing, they normally, uh, you know, they're relaxed and they're chilling. They normally just wave. But here, everything to the right of us right here is all uh, the dam. You'll be able to see it a little better now. Well, I'll, actually, uh, the dam was back there. Uh, this is actually, uh, what do they call it, the dike? Oh, am I missing gears? Am I missing gears? What? A retention wall I guess is what that is yeah I guess it's more of a retention wall and uh, coming up on it right here and I've spent many many of nights with my cousins over there at that dam just fishing and barbecuing and back in the days when I used to do that a lot oh yeah I enjoyed it had a great time it was great memories one of the last memories that I have of a great, the awesome person in my life that unfortunately um, is no longer with us. Um, he uh, passed away in a car accident, which is uh, my cousin, uh, my cousin Andres Mejia, Elmer. Um, one of the best memories that I had with him was here. And just going by that spot right there, just just gets me feeling, you know, just just remembering him and, and uh, puts a smile on my face. And man, he rest in peace, my brother. That dude was like my brother. He was like, you know, he was truly like my brother. And uh, we were only a few years apart in age. And we did everything together. We did every, we used to do everything together. Um, unfortunately, for the past, the last seven years of his life, I lived uh, far away, so I didn't see him as much. But we still kept in contact. He would still call me all the time. He would come to my house down there where I lived, uh, six hours away down by the border. 
and uh, just love the guy. And he's one of those people, guys, that would always tell you what it was. There was no sugar coating. There was no, um, you know, there was no nice. No, I mean, he was a great person, the best person. If you were on his good side, had the heart of gold. But if you crossed him, woo, man. When I had my, when I had my, uh, my, my first truck that I ever got, he, uh, I had a load going to Washington, I remember this. And he was the type of guy, now this may be irresponsible on my side, but it was very irresponsible on my side. Before y'all start talking noise to me. <laughs> but um, this was about, oh man, 12 years ago or so, maybe more. Somewhere around there. Anyways, uh, I had a load going to Washington State, and he, him and his girlfriend, went with me and uh, oh was it him and his girlfriend or was it just him by himself I don't remember but anyways I know he went with me and he's one of those people that could drive anything he was a mechanic that's what he did for trade he was a mechanic great mechanic but he uh, he could drive anything it didn't take him nothing to learn anything so he's like I was like you want to drive the truck just looked at me with the big old smile that he always had and uh, he's like yeah so pulled over at a rest area and uh, he drove and the guy drove my truck like if he had been driving trucks for years and you know and that's the reason that I let him drive the truck was just was because I knew what kind of person he was I knew that he I knew that he was already paying attention to everything that I was doing on the truck like that's just, that was just his thing. He would pay attention to everything that I did, uh, you know, driving wise. And so I already knew that he was on top of his game, that he was gonna be able to, to drive the truck like like nothing. And uh, sure enough, he got in the driver's seat and he switched gear. I mean, he went through the gears, floated the gears like, like he'd been driving for years. And uh, you know, situations like that were able to give, like, you know, in the trucking, has has it been able to give me um, great opportunities to take my family. Unfortunately, here we're not allowed to have any uh, passengers with us, which really, really sucks. I mean, I really, 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 really hate that. I understand why they do it. I just really hate that. Um, they used to, the company I used to work for would allow your wife, at least, and that was pretty cool because during the summer breaks, the kids would uh, stay at my parents or, her, or uh, her parents' house, and she would ride with me for a couple of weeks. And that was that was the thing. That was awesome. But this company doesn't allow that. Anyways, but the trucking has been able to give me the opportunity to take my family out. You know, when I used to take them out um, during the summer, sometimes I would pick up my oldest daughter. And she would go ride with me for a couple of weeks. Um, I've taken family members, my wife's uh, brothers. Um, I've taken them out. Um, of course, my dad. Um, just endless. I mean, just a lot of friends and, and family members that were able to go out with me and uh, see our life out here. Um, my dad became a truck driver. Two cousins of mine. No, I mean, one cousin of mine, uh, Ruben, he became a truck driver. Um, who else? Um, just different, you know, different people in my family became truck drivers because of, maybe, maybe because of the experience that they had. And maybe because they knew the potential that you would make a little better money than working a nine to five. Like I said before, you're not going to get rich, but you're, you make pretty decent money. I can't really complain too much. Uh, but yeah, this 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 industry has gotten me, given me the opportunity to just to look at a person's eyes 
when they see something new. And it might not be any anything big. Just leaving Texas into Louisiana, into Louisiana, I've seen pe people that have taken their eyes light up saying, wow, I actually left Texas. I'm actually in a new state that they've never been in. You know, just that it was so much satisfaction to me and just being able to um, show them what life was really like out here was amazing. And that was one of the things that with my cousin that, um, that I remember so much. And he, he, he made such a big impact in my life. Anybody that was that knew him and that loved him will tell you the same thing. He's made so much impact. He made he made so much impact in all of their lives, and they would be lying if they told you they didn't think about him all the time. Uh, because I would be lying if I told you I didn't think about him all the time. I think about him every day. Like there's one situation, like any situation that I'm in, I immediately think about him. Just certain things that happen. Most of the time it's with uh, vehicles. Like I'll see a car that, that he would have loved to have or, or uh, you know, would have admired like, like I do. And uh, it, just, it just brings me back. It brings me back just thinking about him. And I mean, even sometimes when something breaks on, a, on my truck or something or on my vehicle, I just I feel I I just feel like ants like like ants. I feel like dialing that phone and uh, asking him what's wrong. And that's what I used to do. I would just tell him, "Hey man, my car is making this noise," and he would just tell you. First of all, he'd tell you you bought a piece of junk. That was a guarantee. That was the first thing he would tell you uh, every time you called him. Hey, cause uh, I, my car is making this noise when it turns. <laughs> And he, he had this saying, and I'll see if y'all can catch up to it. He had this saying, it was, he said it real quick too, he was like, shit about a Honda. And then you'd be like, what? And he'd be like, yeah, shit about a Honda. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're not listening. You should have bought a Honda. He loved Hondas. Hondas was his thing. So if you had anything other than a Honda, you drove drunk. And that's what he would tell you all the time. But just little sayings like that that he would that he would uh, uh, say sometimes was just it was crazy. And he was uh, at one point in time he was like really really in the church, and he he found ways to cuss you out without really cussing you out. He he would he would say words. It sounded similar to the word, the bad word, but it wasn't a bad word. I mean, I guess it was because he meant it to be that way, but he, he would make it where it didn't sound like it. And uh, like one, for example, I'm not going to say the first part, but the second one is fluke. So he would say fluke, fluke you. So he wouldn't say the other word, but he, just things like that, this guy would but just uh, he would just tell you the, the craziest things man it was it was amazing he would cuss you out and you would be you would be smiling at him and he's like I don't you know I just told you off and like uh, okay <laughs> oh man but yeah that passing up that that dam right there just brought all them smiles back to my back to me and, and, and all the all them wonderful uh, thoughts back and you know um, guess I'm not gonna guess I mean I'm gonna dedicate this video to him dedicate this video to to my little brother that I miss dearly every day I don't uh, talk about him as much as I used to just because I, you know um, it's in my I'm grinding all kinds of gears stuff moves a lot too though um, hey I don't talk about him a whole whole lot just because I mean uh, just want him to rest in peace but I have him in my mind every single day of my life yes I do 
It's like my cousin Joel, too, was another one that's a big impact in my life. I've talked about him a bunch of times, and he he uh, he was the, he's the reason for the suicide prevention that I that I do. Uh, my cousin Joel Jr. is what we called him, what I called him. Um, but my my brother, he he uh, my brother Elmer, he he was just an amazing amazing person. He was in the room. When, when he was in the room, he was just, um, he was just, he was the light, the light of the room. If uh, you were at a party and he wasn't there, and when he showed up, yeah, just everybody just gravitated to him, you know? He's like, he's just, man, I'm just missing all these gears. <laughs> not catching that, not timing that slosh right. There he is, there we go, there we go. Not timing that slosh right. Bam, there he hit back there. Now we can switch gear. Here we go, here we go. We're doing it, we're doing it. <laughs> but anyways, everybody just uh, gravitated towards him whenever he was he was there, because he was just the life of the party. Uh, unfortunately, he we lost him in a, you know, in a tragic car accident. Which, uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, uh, you know, he had been driving He's been, he was one of the best drivers I ever knew. One of the best drivers I ever knew. And uh, to this day, I don't really, I don't really believe the story of what happened in his accident. Uh, to me, I believe that somebody was maybe involved and followed him and pushed his car or something. Something happened to me, something to me, it smelled like it smells like foul play, but they they uh, they deemed it to be an accident. What can you do? Just uh, if somebody was involved, just have hope that he will uh, that person will receive justice by God Almighty, because it it really it really hurts to have lost him. I was down in uh, I was down in Alamo, Texas, when I received that phone call, and uh, I had never cried so much. Just that that six-hour drive from down there back up up to here, where he where he passed in Huntsville, Texas, uh, was one of my hardest drives I think I ever had in my life. Uh, I just, I was just, I couldn't, I couldn't really drive. My wife drove. I was just bawling. I was just out of control. Couldn't believe it. You know, as you guys, some of you guys have uh, been through, lost loved ones. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And a lot of you have known that people, that person, or knows that person that lights up the room when you, whenever they show up. Cherish every moment. Cherish every moment with your family. With that person. Tell them how much they mean to you for being the light of the room and for just uh, making you feel good. Let them know. Tell them that. Because you never know like what happened with my, with my little brother. He was my cousin my blood, but to me, in my mind, and in my heart, he was my little brother, and, uh, sorry to have gotten a little sentimental with you guys, but, he just came up, he just, you know, especially going by that dam, he just, and, he was a big part of me in, in my trucking uh, career, and, and you know, it's, it was amazing. But I'm going to go ahead, guys, and get to the house, do some time, do some downtime. I'm going to, um, I might not be able to upload, I don't know, I don't know what the situation is going to be, because my, 
my computer that I, I, I might be doing more lives, I don't know, for the next week or so. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out. But my computer has been kind of messing up and I have a, another cousin of mine that he's a computer genius. And uh, my cousin Jesse, shout out to him. He, uh, we're gonna kind of troubleshoot it, see, figure it out what we need to buy. I wanna upgrade, he said I can update it and make it a lot faster. And, and all that stuff so um, I don't really want to buy another thousand dollar computer I just rather fix this one for a couple hundred dollars and uh, up, update it he said he can get it to run it uh, as good as a brand new one by updating a couple things so we're gonna do that so if y'all don't see any video videos from me um, that might be the issue why but if not we're gonna keep on keep on keeping on and keep on posting these great videos for you guys hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos but yeah, guys, I want to dedicate this video to my primo, to my brother, uh, Elmer Andres Mejia. Uh, love you, brother. Always think about you. I know you're up there looking down at me and uh, protecting me down here. So it's always good to feel that. But guys, don't forget to be kind to one another. Help anybody needs help, especially in these times of need. Do what you can for somebody if you can do it. If you have the means, do it. And uh, you will feel good about it, I promise you. Anybody contemplating suicide during these hard times, please don't do that either. Because eventually this stuff is going to be over with. It's going to be done and everything's going to go, um, not back to normal normal, but everything's going to get back a lot better than what's going on now. So thinking about that kind of stuff find a friend get somebody that you can talk to or you can call this 1-800-273-8255 suicide lifeline prevention line so you can get help love you guys so much see you guys on the next video peace i'm out of here guys